Okay guys, so this is the story time part of um, why and what and how I broke up. Bear in mind, like I waffle on, like I'm gonna try and limit it to important, but if I'm telling a story, I'm telling a story my way and my way is a long way, my way is an orphaning way, so you just deal with it. If, if people can watch people watch TV for an hour, you guys can watch me. <laughs> three hours no I'm joking I don't know how long the video is because I'm obviously just recording it now so whatever it is okay if it's too long don't watch it if it's if you want to watch it and you want to find out but you don't want to watch it that long just skip through parts I don't know what so I'm gonna start now and here we go Ta -da! I should have worn all white and done it like Nikita Johnson I just had images of like him tapping on my window with a gun but then my humour is really crass and like if you don't get it then you're not going to get me and then if you don't get me then you shouldn't be watching me that's the end of the story let's start okay so how did we meet and if you're following me on snapchat or instagram social media whatever you would know that i've gone on to these websites like two and a half years post my husband's death i've thought you know what the heck why don't i just try these apps like muslim dating and, like, and i hear so many people about like having success stories etc i'm like you know what what's the worst that can happen i'll just stick myself on these websites or these dating muslim dating apps and just whatever comes my way comes my way and like if it's not amazing i'm not gonna have to deal with it i put myself on minda and Muzmatch. minda was shite absolute shite um like when i say shite i mean the 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 class of men that are on there absolutely disgusting um not serious at all like i don't even know what like they should be on tinder like it almost feels like a lot of them kind of got lost when they're trying to download tinder and they were in auto corrected to minda because the gods were trying to like put them on the straight and narrow but they're not on the straight and narrow and they ended up downloading minda when they wanted tinder and and they're trying to like play these muslim girls that just want to get married and like kind of like sell down and like not be haram anymore and like anyway so minda no Mismatch was a bit more serious people, but the kind of people are like, do you know when you hear about like the good guys that you no one wants? <laughs> They're all a mismatch, <laughs> basically. So, um, well, that's my experience of both of those both apps. So, like, everyone always like wants like someone who's not always like everyone wants like a slight bad boy. I'm sure you. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. A slight, slight bad boy, slight guy that can, especially if you're me. I'm such a small person. I need someone to put, put me in my place, and that can be a good guy. <laughs> it has to be someone who I can't answer back to. Like my words are like the biggest beating you'll ever receive. Like I'm just so vicious with my words when I'm in a fight. But after the fight's over, I'm like completely fine, and I've like lost all my anger, and I'm just like so in love again. Like that's just me. So. I digress. This is why it's gonna be a long video. Anyway, so I, dig I digress. Okay, so basically what happened was I was on these apps, literally pointless, nothing was coming of it. And I was kind of, it almost became a game. Like literally people would like message me, I'd find it hilarious, I'd screenshot it, stick it on my social media. We just laugh about it, like girlfriends. And some of them would add me on my social media and be like, um, what the fuck? Um, and some of them would just like laugh and like whatever. It was a game, whatever. I was literally on there, just by default at this point. I wasn't looking for anything because I knew nothing was coming out of either of these apps that I would be interested in. Then um, along came this dark, handsome fellow <laughs> who um, swiped right to me on Muzmatch, obviously. This, 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 the good stuff doesn't come from, from Minda, obviously. Um, I thought, hmm, okay, you're quite okay looking. I read his... Um, bio ticked a lot of boxes basically he just seemed like a gentleman so i thought okay let me just like you know um swipe right here as well and then we started talking it was so so slow starting up and he'd message me and then i'd reply it wasn't like there was nothing there like kind of captivating either of us it was just very very kind of slow minute and it was like this for a couple of days then we exchanged numbers i thought this guy by a couple of days, I kind of ascertained whether this girl was a decent fellow that you could give your number to, not a psychopath. So I figured, yep, you know what, this guy, there's no harm in giving him my number. I gave him my number, um, and he, we started messaging. Again, the messages for two weeks were so, so slow. Um, like, I'm just not used, I'm just used to zero to a hundred real quick. Like, I was married to my late husband within ten dates 
of meeting him for the first time and not because it was an arranged marriage because we were like head over heels in love we were like crazy love I'm used to crazy love so this was very very different to me but I thought to myself you know what this is maybe maybe this is me maturing maybe this is a mature relationship this is what I need not like the typical fuck boys from like before where it's just all rubbish talk at the start and they, they don't really actually have anything to offer do you know when you know when you're so into someone you're literally on tenterhooks waiting for them to message it wasn't like that but I kind of reasoned it in my mind as this is a mature adult relationship I'm 31 he's 35 like this is what it's supposed to be so um he was Iranian by the way um obviously you guys know I'm Iraqi with like a dash dash of Iranian that I like to like big up when I'm around Iranians and like bring my down when I'm around Iraqis but yeah and my daughter is like pretty much Iranian because her father was Iranian as well so I thought you know this is great he could teach her Farsi I've always wanted her to learn Farsi because of her dad um like kind of to kind of rem remove from because if he's here obviously she'd be learning Arabic from me she'd be learning Farsi from him and she'd be learning English from school and I want her to kind of, I want it to kind of be as much as possible as if he was there so Fast forward two weeks time, eventually we got around to going on the date. So I, for me, whenever I'm going on the first date, I'm like, you know, I just like let this guy choose where we're going to go because that will kind of determine what kind of guy he is. And um, he told me to meet him in this restaurant in um, Piccadilly, South, Central London, basically, which was nice. It was, an, it was a nice kind of like eclectic restaurant. Like it was middle class kind of like, it wasn't like takeaway it wasn't like oh my god ott like wow like why are you taking me here like are you desperate like what's wrong with you it was just right bang in the middle like it was just kind of like a fun cool place quirky place so i met up with him when i saw him i thought okay like he's not a catfish this is great that wasn't just a really good photo on his profile this is actually good so we sat down I sat down with him like it was I felt a bit awkward, like there were a couple of awkward silences, but it wasn't that bad. So I thought, okay, this is not bad. He, and he was telling me about himself and like, about he was talking about Dean and like, it, it kind of like, the fact that he was such a good guy, like on his Dean, like this is something that I should actually really, really consider. Anyway, so finished the meal after about two, I think it was an hour and a half. It wasn't that long, it was an hour and a half. He walked me to my car and then he, he was like to me, so, and I was like, so what? <laughs> like, what? what do you want from me right now? <laughs> like, what? He was like, I felt like he was trying to find out like what I thought. But I was like, Tim, this kind of conversation happens by text when we're at home. Like, this is a happen face. Like, I'm not used to like answering you. What do I think of you face to face? Like, that doesn't happen. So that was the first date. And then a couple of days later, he goes to me, do you want to come out with me to go to Bista Village? And I was like, okay, why not? Um, he goes, you can bring your, why don't you bring your daughter? And I was like, I don't know, I'm just not ready right now to bring my daughter. Um, like, let's just leave it, like, for a while, yeah. So we ended up going to Bista Village. Okay. I was kind of worried about the journey there because it's about an hour away from London. So that was one of my biggest worries, was that journey, like, what if we have nothing to say, no conversation? Like, generally, like, I want to put music on and, like, just sing and obviously can't do that. And this guy he, he wasn't really much of a music listener like, it wasn't he didn't do it but he wasn't much of a music listener so I didn't want to kind of impose but then you know, when we got into the car he put the music on for me like to make me feel kind of at ease so we had this day in Bista Village got home he dropped me home around five-ish then he messaged me around seven eight o'clock he goes what are you doing and I was like just chilling and he goes to be to out for dinner this is the same day so I was like okay <laughs> I'm just like one of these people like yeah, no, let's just do it. So he came, picked me up, and went to Nando's. It wasn't anything special. I went to Nando's, sat, had a meal, um, you know, started talking some more. And it kind of, like, from there, it kind of developed. And I guess we just ended up being together. Like, we were just talking about things. And he's like, well, he needs to move abroad. But, like, I had to consider that. And I was thinking, mm, I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, do you know when you're in the beginning and it's just all, like, honeymoon phase and honeymoon periods, etc.? And then eventually parents got involved, like meeting with parents and things like that. And and it became more kind of official. What then happened was 
and do you know from the very very start like like even like when we were saying I love you it was almost and, and it was almost as if like we literally we know we're so different like he's m so mature beyond his years and I'm so immature and it's almost we knew we were so different but it's like I love you but I don't understand why I love you like it was like that like a, a couple of things also happened and we feel like maybe this is meant to be and like one of the things was I don't know if I told you guys but my late husband chose Ava's name and when I was having that talk with him when I was about 12 weeks pregnant we didn't know the sex of the child and he wanted a girl but he was so sure that he wasn't going to get a girl so I said to him what would you name your baby like what what you what are we going to name the baby and he goes I'm going to name it Reza and I was like okay what if it's a girl he goes it's not going to be a girl like I know it's going to be a, girl, a, girl, a boy because I come from a long line of boys and I was like okay fine but what if the off chance it's going to be a girl and he goes to me um okay if it's going to be a girl then I'd li I like the name Ava um and that's basically the long story short of how Ava got named but his original choice was Reza for a boy it was going to be Reza so I was sitting down one day we were sat talk with this guy um we were sat talking I don't know how the topic of babies came up and he must have said something like oh yeah like I was like oh, what would you name your babies and, he, and he's like oh straight away first baby is going to have to be Reza I know it's so stupid like looking back now I don't know if it is stupid but for me it was just like a sign it was like shit like what the hell like maybe, maybe this is a sign or whatever it is the things like that that happened and the fact that I kept telling myself you know he's a good guy he's this is the kind of guy that I should be going for like and he was such a decent guy like, I mean he to, not, to this day I will still say he's a decent guy I said to myself you know what maybe I just kind of just stick through this like any kind of reservations that I was having or beginning to have I just kind of pushed to the back of my mind a lot and my rev my reservations were that I know I should get closer to my Dean I know that I know I need to get closer to my Dean and I want a guy the most important thing to him is Dean like, but I still want to have fun like I'm still like a child at heart I know I'm not going to be a child forever I know they want but I'm the kind of person that's kind of always going to have a bit of a childish side, always. I, I think I can imagine myself being 60 and still being a bit of a kid, like joking and laughing. And like, and I thought that what I want is someone who's like tall, dark and handsome and that's what's going to be. But it wasn't because I had that and our, and our personalities weren't like were complete opposites. Like, I was so outgoing and loud and fun and like jokey and he was really really kind of like quiet not so jokey and like his jokes were a bit different to my jokes it was very very different but like I said I just kept you know reasoning it in my head thinking well this is what an adult relationship is this is like and for me whenever I'm in a relationship with someone and they're the one i.e my two husbands I've had they and don't tell me why is the first one the one if you divorced him because I divorced him for my own reasons but at the time that time of my life that person was the one both my husbands were like they were my best friends like that's what I'm used to I'm used to my husband being my best friend in this situation he would have just been my husband no way my best friend and I'm used to when I'm with someone I'm literally inside their kidneys we are not only husband and wife but we are each other's best friends so we choose to do stuff with, the, with each other over anybody else in the world what I found with, with this situation was that he wasn't the first person I'd want to course tell about something he wasn't someone that I'd like certain outings I wouldn't think of like it was a very very weird surreal surreal experience for me that's not what I'm used to my lives of friendship and you know husband were very very divided and I'm not saying it doesn't work to have a husband who's just a husband and have your friends. It works for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for me. I need to have a best friend who's a husband. So I found my days on date, and, and like the person I'm with, genuinely, I don't, I can't get enough of them. Like, I just always want to be around them. I always want to see them. I found myself days preferring to go out with my friends over him. I found myself days staying at home all day if I felt like he tried to meet up I kind of make excuses oh, I have to do this 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 like that that to me was like a massive like alarm bell like yeah I know love grows I get that after marriage love grows different kind of love but I was like 
I don't even want to move abroad, to leave my family here and my friends and my life. Everything that I know is London. I've been here. Like, I've been in the UK my entire life since I was born. To move away, that's such a massive step. And I wasn't, like, okay with moving for him. And and I thought, you know, maybe this is just, like, kind of, like, cold feet because who's going to want to move away from their family? It's just going to be difficult for anybody. But then I thought back to my relationship with Mo. And I thought to myself, Mo, my late husband, I thought to myself, like, there were so many talks of us saying that we were going to either move, live to in America or UK. And I was literally, that was his foot, my foot was on top. Wherever he went, I would have gone. And the more I thought about that, the more I was like, this, there's something that's not quite there here. And another thing was, um, I don't know if you follow me on social media, then you know I, I smoke shisha. I swear to you, before I met this guy, believe me, I had this thing within myself telling myself that, you know, I've hit 30, it was about a year ago, it's like I've hit 30, I want to eventually stop, like in the next two, three years, I plan to stop, that is my plan for myself, I don't care what, I need to eat healthy, I want to be like on this raw food kind of stuff, I want to just like get on my ball game with the healthy food, and I want to cut out the smoking, that was my plan for myself, he came into my life and he said, I'm not okay with shisha. I was like, okay, but I'm smoking it right now. So what you can do about it? And then he was like, okay, fine, you can smoke it until we get married. That, and I agree to that. Or any person, if you tell them not to do something, they're gonna wanna do even more. Like that person, imagine this person decided to not do it anyway. And then someone comes like, no, no, you have to not do it. You have to, before, by the time we get married, you have to, I don't know, it could be a couple of months, it could be a year, I don't know. You have to stop it. I was like, no. And it made me want to not stop anymore. So I smoked more. I remember like he used to always kind of huff and puff whenever he saw me smoking. And it was just like, we said I'll stop when I'm about to, when we're about to get married. Like there's no need to take it out of my nose in the meantime. Like you've already said it's okay up until then. It was just stuff like that. I remember for my birthday, on the way to where we were going, I, all I remember thinking was I was just sitting there and I knew he had planned something for me. Like, can you imagine someone's planned something to you? You should be so excited. All I was thinking to myself was, I'd rather, and I know that something's planned, and like, something is gonna be a special evening. It's my birthday, it's one of, one of my birthday dates. It was a day before my birthday. On the way there, I was just thinking to myself, I would literally rather be with my friends in Starbucks right now. And I think that thought really hit home with me. And I was like, how? I love my fun. I love going out on these special t like outings and going places. Like, how is it that just because of the company, I'd rather be stop Starbucks? And by the way, we were ending it. We were going to like I don't know if anyone knows the comedian Omi Jalili, the Iranian guy, Iranian, the Iranian guy. We were going to watch him. Like, I love him. I've loved him since I was a kid. And yeah, it was amazing. I had a great time with the comedian. But do you know when the company is just a bit off? It was a bit like that and I remember after that he tried to, he, he was honestly, like, he was a really, really good guy. He tried to kind of like give me something that he thought I wanted and that was maybe shisha in his mind. So he took me to a shisha place and he went, he went, we went to a place that I usually go to in my local. When I say to you, I sat down there, I ordered my shisha and within five minutes of it arriving I wanted to leave like if you know me then you know there was a problem there can you imagine someone takes you somewhere and their face is like a slapped ass and you could tell that not, not just you can tell the entire establishment can tell that this person does not want to be here and I'm sat there thinking Lord help me, like, I just want to leave right now and I've just ordered the shisha, like, it's just how am I going to leave right now? Like, that's all I was thinking. It was my day before my birthday. And, um, I must have kept asking him, like, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong? Like, what's wrong? Like, maybe there's something wrong. I'm just thinking, like, maybe. Please, Lord, let it be something wrong that's wrong with you right now that you're pissed off that you're acting like this. Please, please let it not be for no reason. <laughs> He's like, nothing, 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 nothing. And I was like, okay, after about half an hour, I've never chilled in this place for half an hour. Let me just tell you, when I go with my friend, which is about two hours, minimum. Like, we sit there, we don't even talk, and we're comfortable. 
And I was sat here with this person in silence, feeling so uncomfortable. I was like, after half an hour, I was like, I want to leave. I was like, hey, let's just, let's just, go. let's just call it a night. Let's just go. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. So yeah, like that, that happened. And I was just like to myself, I can't keep ignoring these things. Like that we are so different. We're so, so different. And like a lot of why, what I was weighing, I was weighing a lot of my being with him for the fact that he was a mature person. You know, he had a good head on his shoulders. He was, he was on his dean. I wouldn't say he was controlling, but he wanted, he had this image of this wife that wasn't me. Like I can be an amazing housewife. Like I've, I've tried and tested this with Mo. Maybe not my first husband. I was an idiot then, but during my second marriage, I was like, I could literally not fault my housewifery skill. <laughs> well, that's, not, that's me being modest. I swear to God, every department I was on top of. Cleaning, cooking, everything I was on top of. So I know that I could be a good housewife, but the housewife that I could be would have not been good enough for him. Literally, the stuff that he would have wanted of me wouldn't have been me. I think that that literally what it came down to he wanted someone else I wanted someone else and we were kind of like I don't know what he was justifying to himself because he's a like decent guy like he I'm sure he can get a, the kind of girl that he wants you know in a, in a minute what I was justifying all I know is what I was justifying for myself and that was decent guy on his dean tall which is important because I've always been on short guys. I, I think that's just what I attract. I don't know what it is. Okay, because I'm so fat. I don't know. But I always attract people that are my height. My first husband was my height. Mo, my late husband, was my height. This guy was tall. I was like, yeah. Maybe I, you know, maybe I can sacrifice a couple of my conditions for him. The fact that he's tall. Maybe. So that was that. His relationship with Ava. I'm trying like a lot with Ava. And I saw that. And I was genuine trying. It was not disingenuous at all. As soon as he found out that she loves Kinder Eggs, he, the first time he met her, he brought Kinder Eggs. Not just Kinder Eggs, he brought loads. And every time he used to come, he'd, he'd bring Kinder Eggs. Like, he honestly, like, that's what I'm saying to you. He's, this is what made my decision so much more difficult. He's actually such a decent, good catch. And, um, and it was literally just a case of, like, being a clash of, like, personalities and culture an example was um the way that i've been brought up is not a very angered way at looking at dean like it's not angry like i don't care if someone is gay and when i say they don't care i'm not saying i agree with being gay because obviously my li my religion does not permit us to agree with being gay what i'm saying is that if this person is casting himself as a muslim i'm nobody to take that away from him he can cast himself as a Muslim. What's whether he is, whether he's not, that's gonna be judged by our Lord. And I'll leave that to that. I can never turn around and say to him that person's not a Muslim. And I think he had a bit more of a black white approach, whereas I had a bit more of grey. Everyone knows I've got a bit more of a grey approach. I'm sure if you follow me on social media, that's pretty much the one thing I'm slayed for, but I'm literally too halal for the haram people and too haram for the halal people. That's literally my my dilemma, and I'm sure loads of girls' dilemma. Anyway, so um, so the way that I've been raised is not very an angered approach. Like Halloween, I would let my daughter go trick or treating with the other kids. I would not exclude her from that. We have like family gatherings where we celebrate Christmas. When I say celebrate Christmas, we don't celebrate Christmas. Gather, to, we use the holiday for our own benefit. And everyone comes from the different countries and they come gather at one place and we have a nice Christmas dinner because we love food. And Christmas, Christmas food is the best food, literally. Like you can't even beat Christmas food. He was of a different belief of that. With Christmas, no, no such thing as like that. You can have the meal, but you can't say it's Christmas dinner. I'm not used to life like that. Like, oh. I knew, I know because of the kind of person I am, I can get my way, I know this, but it, in my mind, it wasn't worth that struggle and it wasn't worth that effort. And I asked him, I was like, do you think this is just more like, like we're kind of blinded by the actual truth and we're kind of like, kind of fixated on this honeymoon period of just getting to know someone and maybe we're not like, maybe these aren't real feelings, like maybe it's like, you know, it's not love, maybe it's just like, 
a lot <laughs> as a friend. <laughs> to me, he goes to me, well, I don't know about you, but that's not what it is for me and blah, 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 which made me feel a bit guilty. At the end of the conversation, I felt bad because of what he was saying, like, oh, I don't feel like this and maybe it's just you and blah, blah, blah. So I kind of felt really guilty. I was like, I need to think about this a bit more before I kind of say this again. You know, there's stuff about, like, maybe we're not the right people for each other, etc. So I said to him, look, forget everything I've just said today. I don't know, maybe I just don't know what I'm feeling, blah, blah, like, just ignore it. We'll just have this conversation a different time, blah, blah, and we'll think more about it, etc. He was like, okay, we went home, whatever. That's what happened. The next day, it was my actual bad day. So what he did was he had planned a day, like, from morning till the night, a day full of activities for me. Like things to do, not my activities. I'm not a kid. Like, oh, we're going to the crash and then we're going to the bouncy castle. No, like it was like a like a stuff to do, like dinner, lunch, and like nice places, etc. Presumably a gift. I don't know. And um, I must have messaged him. I said, "Hey, I didn't want to upset him at the same time, but after the day that I had had the night before, like with the in the car wanting to be my friends and like thinking my friends would be more of an enticing." outing right now going to Starbucks and going to here and like the shisha situation the solid silence and all that and I was like I can't this is my birthday I'm gonna be 31 like I'm not no I'm not gonna sit here and have to deal with this shit on my birthday <laughs> just my birthday let me have that please let me just have that and I was fully intending to spend my birthday with him but had it not been for the day before so I messaged him I said to him hey I asked my friend ages ago if she wants to go out, she confirmed with me and I can't really cancel on her, is that okay? And then he must have been like in a half. He was like, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to. I'll cancel what I have planned. I know this was a bitchy move. I know. Do you know when you do something you don't care, the consequences? I was there. Like, you know when you want someone to break up with you, but you're too bad, you feel too bad to do it? It was there. So, uh, like, obviously, if I cared more, if I loved more, I would never do that. Because if you're scared, you lose that person. When you're not scared, you'll do it. And then he was kind of very quiet throughout the rest of the day. Understandably, he was upset. Next day, quiet. Me, when I'm in a fight, I need to solve things there and then. And the fact that he was kind of taking this highway approach and thinking that taking... The worst thing you can give me during an argument is space. He took a couple of step, steps back and he was just like being very like reserved with me. Do you know when you're not feeling someone and they're acting up and you just like, oh, can't be honest with shit. So that happened and it took about a week, no, 10 days even, for us to eventually meet and by this time I had literally talked myself out of the entire thing. I was supposed to meet him, I didn't even want to meet him. Like it was, it was like, a, it was a chore and it was a burden, that's how I felt. So I ended up just calling him and saying, look, we could just have this conversation on the phone and I sort of said it to him and I was like I'm like this 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 is how I'm feeling and I just don't even know and I was like the worst thing you could have done was give me space because now it's made me like solidify whatever I was feeling even more and all he was saying was okay 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 tag conversation and that was pretty much it bit of an anti-climax right you're expecting something like big all my days and he threw this shoe and then this no it was nothing like that it was just very very dry that's it and um that was the end of the story but we basically broke up 10 days after my birthday which would have been about 22nd of december now and it's now 20 oh wow 22nd of january it's been exactly one month and i'm fine and i guess me being fine kind of reiterates or kind of further shows me that this was the best thing I could have done because I would never be this okay after a breakup. Or just that you crumble and die. And I didn't. And I haven't really hit I know I know that look, he's such a good catch that I know there may be a time that will come that I will regret my decision. That I look back and think, hmm, I kind of had it pretty good. This guy was so decent, he was so this, he was so that. But even with that, I'm willing to take that risk because I'm not, I'm not going to settle to having, not to not having my best friend as my husband. I've had it twice before, so I know I can have it. And if I can't have it again, I don't need to have it again. I just don't need to be married. Like I've done marriage twice. 
had two amazing weddings. I'm not in a position right now where I'm desperate to be married. No girl should be. The minute you're desperate to get married is the minute you will start compromising your standards. Although my, I was compromising and settling with this guy, it wasn't because he was any less of a guy to, like, or a catch. It was a great catch. I was settling in terms of what I'm used to as a relationship with my husband. Like a fun, jokey, like always like, laughing at each other, roasting each other, always want to do everything with each other. Like that was it. Anyway, so that's my story. I hope you guys kind of get, understand where I'm coming from. If you don't, it's fine. It's not your life. It's not your relationship. It's my relationship. And I know what I'm used to. And I know I can get that again. And, even if, and if I can't get that again, I don't need to. Like, I'm good. I've got my daughter. I've had my two marriages. I'm happy. Like, I'm fine. So, so yeah. I'd rather be with no one than be with someone and feel like I was settling. That's pretty much the end of it. That is it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've got loads of questions from you guys, like, loot through Snapchat, Instagram, everywhere. So I'm gonna do another video um, next couple of days. Subscribe and turn post notifications on um, to, to get a notification of my next video, which is gonna be up soon with me answering all your questions. So yeah, bye guys.